Welcome back to another episode. I am Stick. This is my best friend and co-host D-Lo, and we are too complex. We got some we got some sports, but it's a little bit off topic today as far as the sports, and we def- definitely got some drama for you today too. But before we get into the content, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of these bangers mm-hmm. that we drop every single week. D-Lo, what's good with you, my boy? How was your weekend, man? Weekend was good. Um, what we talked about? Did we not talk about this? Today, today too, today, boy. It is, but I feel like <laughs> we had the same conversation. <laughs> Dog, oh this is crazy. Listen, you have a deja because, vu? <laughs> yeah, because it feels like <laughs> I just told you what I did this weekend on here. Anyway, you told me what week- you did last weekend. Well, you, on Friday, you told me about the whole thing about college. But yeah. That was but, the following weekend. That was the damn, weekend. That's before. right. We moved to yeah. Friday morning. Okay. 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 Weekend yeah. was good, man. Um, My wife's family was here. Her her mother and her sister, like I told you, her sister has mo- moved into college. So mm-hmm. had some company. My son's birthday is today. Shout out to you. Happy oh, birthday, happy baby boy. birthday, nephew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I got to put I gotta put it in my phone, bro. I yeah, phone. all good. And so we celebrated his birthday Sunday with his, it was supposed to be with his grandmother and his aunt, but they had to leave early. But we, okay. we did celebrate as a family with him Sunday. So it was good. Um, the wife being festive as always. Of course, of course. Got him all kind of stuff. He got a dag on Batmobile now. Oh, man. Yeah, so we dealing with that, but everything is good, man. Um, no, no real complaints. How about you? How how was your weekend? How has your week started off? You got any plans for this upcoming week weekend? I do, I do, okay. I do. So this pa- this past weekend was co- was cool. It was kind of dope, you know. what I'm saying I was really just chilling. I ended up going to this uh this adult arcade Saturday night. Okay, and it was pretty cool. Like drinks games fun it was pretty chill mm-hmm. um other than that it was just real restful um this coming up weekend though i'm taking sam to her first football game we're going to oh, a right, seahawks game right. this weekend we're going to see how we go to the preseason game against the browns uh luckily you know I'm, I'm a good salesman so people give me free stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> so i got the tickets for free we sitting in the club box and some more stuff so okay Sam has been having some real good sporting event uh, experiences here of recently. Because I remember I told you we went to the Mariners game and we sat in the what's called the press club. All you can yeah. eat buffet food, all you can eat drinks, yeah. anything you wanted, you can have it in the press club. So she had that experience. Now she's about to have another experience at the Seahawks game. So yeah, she about to. Oh, she's going to be bougie like, with her, man. Next she, thing you know, oh, she's going to be dumb bougie. She's going to be telling them she, they, they can't take it to the Cheesecake Factory. No, nah, no, nah, she saying love she get fed at Hockey. She, 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 not, not only she gonna be bougie with the men in her life, she gonna be bougie with me because I ain't gonna be able to take them to no regular game, not no yeah. regular, no regular seating, no general admission. Wait, I can't do we it. Sit, we sitting with the regular people. <laughs> what is no. this? What, what, are we supposed to be up there? We was up there last time, Daddy. Why we ain't up there? Yeah. <laughs> like, baby, you better shut the hell up. No, man, we got to go. But, no, we got to go, Daddy. I don't like to sit with the regular <laughs> folk. <laughs> these peasants but nah uh, but nah she she should have a good time with that um, coming up this weekend it's gonna be my first time going to a Seahawks game this, uh, since I've been here I wanted to go to the Cowboys whenever they came in 2022 but I ended up not being able to go mm-hmm. you know unmitigated circumstances but that's neither here nor there but mm-hmm. uh, so this is gonna be my first time going to and then the experience like that is gonna be fun for me too so uh, it's gonna be a good week it's gonna be a real good week that's what's up yes sir, so let yes, me sir. ask you something wait, what wait. up fool you you had something that you wanted to get off your chest though, man. Listen, <clears throat> I have expressed on too complex on this podcast multiple times about mm-hmm. how I can't stand that little roach girl, sexy red. I cannot stand, bro. So apparently she got a lip gloss line coming out, mm-hmm. and. <sighs> I don't know who's funding this girl because she's clearly an industry plant. I think everybody pretty much knows that. Let me but, ask you something. Why, before you get into that, because you, we've heard this multiple times. I just have so many questions about a lot of stuff. What's up, Is bro? that necessarily a bad thing, though? If it's not a bad thing a on plant? her behalf. It's not like, a bad thing on her behalf. Yeah. Would you say Bronny is a, a plant? Would you say? No, Bronny is, Bronny is a, is a he, he is, he is, 
that's contributed to nepotism. That's not necessarily a plant. Well, I mean, that's not necessarily a. I can't nepotism and being a plant is two different things. She's planted here to make bullshit music and trash music yeah. by people she don't know. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, she, yeah. you know, what I'm saying she's she okay. is meant to appeal to a a a ethnicity, a certain ethnicity, yeah. and a certain um, a certain culture of people. Mm-hmm. That otherwise these these industries wouldn't be able to relate to. She's okay. a plant. Got you. Who else would you say is a plant? Uh, and I'm taking you off of what uh, you, you wanted to do. So I f- forgive me. I'm just trying to figure. I'm trying to figure no, this thing could. out, man. Because you know, it's like we yeah, hear that man, word. Cause... We hear that phrase a lot, and it's like, okay, I understand what people are saying, and I know that is bad in some sense. But is it really bad? Especially not for the person. It's not, the person is not bad at all. Not for her. Not at all. Yeah. It's not bad for her at all. And it's not bad for the record label because she's <laughs> touching, a, a, like I said, she's touching the culture of people that they, otherwise they wouldn't be able to touch. And yeah. her music is selling because of the people who consume her 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 music. Right. And uh, without her, they wouldn't be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they making money, she making money. So that, but she's definitely a, a plant from the industry. Mm-hmm. And I, when every time I see this girl, my I, my skin crawls. I, it, she she literally she don't literally changed. Don't say it. I, no 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 no. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> but she li- she literally she literally changed. <laughs> my boy, my, my boy said. <laughs> my boy said she made his balls itch. Like, what, <laughs> bro? She makes my balls itch, bro. Whenever I see her, I get to scratching. Like, oh, she just ch- <laughs> she literally she literally changes my attitude negatively every time I hear her, oh see her. I'm God. like, why? I can't. I cannot stand sexy red, and I think a lot of people on, the, on that that watch our show know that. But yeah. like I was saying, she has a lip gloss line coming out, and all of the names for her lip gloss line are disgusting things talking with uh, you know with stds and Mm -hmm. a part of her songs if you know what her first song was you know what i'm talking about it's like who is funding this girl and who likes her who is keeping her popular because it's but it's but we know who it is i I don't necessarily have to say it but Mm -hmm. we know who it is we know what we, we know what we know what 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 culture and what we know what what how, what type of people she's reaching and mm-hmm. it's it is annoying that this type of stuff and we've said this before it's annoying that this type of stuff is readily available to be viewed by our children i have a 16 year old she can't stand her but just seeing stuff like that is like is that negative that negatively impacts our culture to me and mm-hmm. i cannot stand the type of stuff that is being pushed to our black youngsters because mm-hmm. well there is a stat out there that that uh, that white folks consume more rap music than we do, but that's neither here nor there. She's How not here for them. Came so She's popular, for, huh? How do you think it became so What'd popular? Oh, how do you think it became so popular all of a sudden? Not all of a sudden because it's been popular for the last couple of years, but more mainstream than it has been when it first came out, and then the nineties and whatnot. The- because they are consuming it more than we yeah. are, really. To be perfectly yeah. honest with you, but that's not who she's. She's not targeting them. And yeah. that's that's the that's the problem with me is that the stuff that she talks about her music and the the persona that she puts off and what she does on social media and now this lip gloss line, bro, like she literally, literally, D-Lo, quite literally makes my balls itch, bro. So if it was something, if it was, <laughs> and it always seems like I'm I'm defending these individuals, I'm really not. You just I'm playing, just, you just playing devil's advocate. I get. I it. am not even really playing devil's advocate. I just want to know your opinion if it was on the other side, like if the lip gloss line was named something appropriate not what it's named i wouldn't would have, have an issue, issue with it yeah. i wouldn't have an issue okay. with it i would not have an issue it's with be- it but it's she because ha- of one who she is and then what the lip gloss the name of the the types of lip gloss is what oh my gets gosh, your skin. Bro. oh it annoys me because you just you just continue to play into this degenerate ass fucking persona that you're yeah. off and it's so annoying bro yeah. it's so annoying even some of our favorite rappers are getting behind her like drake like why are you getting behind this what? bullshit but he, well, but people say Drake he is, a plant too. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. So, so and he not even a. a again, we say it all the time. He's not even really a rap artist. He's a pop. That's why artist. I said. That's why I said our, one, some of my favorite artists. I ain't say rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know what I'm I know. I'm, so, I, yeah, yeah. I got you. It's just so. Uh, she just. Oh, she annoys me so bad. <laughs> it just makes me. Oh, uh, uh, she made me want to throw up. <laughs> like she looked like her wig smelled like cigarettes. She looked. She, oh, yeah, wow. she looked like she looked like Beetlejuice in the face. I hope she see this. Oh wow. Beetlejuice in the face? That's, in that's the just face. mean. 
Like if you say her name three times in the window, she's gonna come out and grab your dick. Yep. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. We on some other stuff now. Stop it. But yeah, what what you, what you got going on, man? You had something else to talk about too? Before yeah, we get to so, the content? I mean, completely different than where you went. <laughs> um, we need to get some gold, my boy. The, the, for the first time in history, a gold bar, which is 400, tri- oh, was it 400 Troy ounces, is mm-hmm. worth a million dollars. What? Yeah, one bar. Is worth a million dollars. A million, a million dollars. One million dollars. Yeah, right. Yeah, we gotta find. We gotta. So, so that means so one troy ounce is worth a million. So no, 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 no. Four hundred troy ounces. Four hundred. Oh, four hundred troy which, ounces. Which one bar is? One you bar know what the bar like, looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what the bar yeah, looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder what. See, I got some gold. I got some gold necklaces, and but they ain't real. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Never mind. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But never mind. But, but yeah, they I said, think we need to get some gold. They said that I don't the current market price for gold as has climbed to two hundred uh, I'm sorry, two thousand five hundred dollars per ounce. Ooh we so you get you have an ounce of gold, you get two twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred dollars. Um, and then so the four hundred troy ounces. Well, what's the difference between a troy ounce and just a regular ounce? I have no idea. You, I didn't. I've never even heard of a Troy ounce until because you said it. <laughs> two, two, twenty five hundred and four hundred. You, you, the math major here. That's not a million dollars. That's not a million, is it? Nah, it's not. Yeah, it's so, not a million. Mm-mm. Well, so, is it twenty five hundred times four hundred? Yeah, it right. might. Be. It actually is. It is. Is it? Yeah, that's exactly a million dollars. Hmm. Damn, I'm terrible at math then because that don't that's seem right to me. That's exactly a million. Okay. Well, yeah. So, yeah. There you go. So you have one hundred on the on the did dot. Um, one million on the did dot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So there you go. I, that, that's all I really had to talk about. That's that was crazy to me for the first time in history. As long as gold has been in circulation, as long as we've been valuing gold for the first time in history, one bar is a million dollars. And is that a yeah. telling of the times that we're in as far as the economy around the world, economies around the world? I don't know. But to see that and then to think about how they say our money is overinflated. You have countries that have super hyperinflation with their money. Like it is really worth nothing. You've got money laying around in public and whatnot. To see that, it's like, damn, uh, maybe I should buy some gold and hold on to it. Is there a way we can invest? Like you can invest you into it in the market, it, there. But um, from what I've heard, there you don't necessarily like you. You get value from it because it increases as the gold increases, but mm-hmm. you don't actually have the actual physical gold, which is where the real value is. The real value is that makes yeah. Sense. So I don't know. That don't sense. ask me anything other than that. I'm just telling. I'm just delivering the information because it was something Amen. that was interesting to me. Might need to look Unlike into it you, sure, gold sure. does not make my itch. <laughs> gold don't make my nuts itch either. <laughs> but it's <laughs> actually red. <laughs> I get the itching. I get the scratching like Tyrone Biggums. Huh? Yeah. Oh, no, no, the Clayton Bigsby. I get this. Is he, this no, no, it, it was Tyrone Biggums. It was Tyrone. It was Tyrone. I get, Tyrone. The, yeah, I get yeah. the scratching like Tyrone Biggums, man. And, nah, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> but getting into the to actual content of the day, man. Our, our 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 favorite topic to talk about on Two Complex, LeBron James. So mm-hmm. there has been. A I wouldn't report. say it's our favorite topic. We just find a way. Man, to we find a way it. to put him in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you're right. It's not not necessarily our favorite topic. But apparently, mm-hmm. during the 2024 trade deadline during the off season. Wait, was it during the no, off season or was it during the trade season. deadline during the season? Mid season trade. It was mid season. LeBron James was apparently supposed to be traded to the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. That would have been a trade to behold, somewhat like what it would have been if Chris Paul would have went to the Lakers back in the day with you know with with our Kobe. With, with God rest his soul Kobe, the Black Mamba. But D'Lo, what do you think would have came of the Golden State Warriors and LeBron and Steph Curry's legacy if that trade would have went through, bro? So you already know. First off, one, it would have negatively impacted LeBron James' legacy because they the narrative mm. would have been, oh, LeBron can't he can't. He always got to be with somebody else to lift him up. 
um, to make mm. him look like he's good to to win games and whatnot. Um, it probably would have negatively impacted Steph's legacy as well because um, outside of the first one that he had before KD got there, and um, the, and, then, and the fourth one, and the fourth one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he really. It's it sounds bad when you say that because he won two championship without two championships without the other bona fide like mega star super duper star yeah right yeah. um but he did they did ask KD to come help save them from losing to LeBron multiple times um but so they both they both would be negatively impacted but we know Bron would have been more negatively impacted than Steph would um cuz mm-hmm. Bron would be going from the Lakers to Golden State. Steph's never left Golden State. He's always been at Golden State for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. We we want our superstars to remain in the same place at all times, even if it's not mm-hmm. of their own doing. Um, we want them to be there for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, so I definitely think it would have negatively impacted Bron. But had they have gone together at this stage in their career, we saw what they did in the Olympics and how mm-hmm. dynamic that duo along with KD was in the Olympics based off of, I will, we don't know what the trade would have been, but right. it would all depend on who else was involved in that trade and what pieces were left in golden state for them to be a team because the salary cap next year, I don't know what, I didn't research what, it's gonna, what it is currently, but I know the salary cap for next year is 148 and a half million dollars. Braun contract right now his cap hit is 48 million dollars mm-hmm. Steph's contract is 56 million dollars something so, like that yep so right there that's a 105 million dollar cap hit Crazy. you only got 48 43 million dollars <laughs> to work with yeah who are you gonna have on the team they gonna be they worse than the Draymond gonna have to take a crazy pay cut to stay on that team if he wanted to stay. <laughs> exactly. <on. laughs> so, so to answer that question, I'm not really sure how they would fare, especially being in the Western Conference. It's not. It's not easy. You got to deal with Jokic. So that's one thing. You would need a big man, two big men actually, mm-hmm. to deal with Jokic. Um, I'm assuming AD would stay in in LA. So you would need somebody to deal with AD also. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the the Timberwolves look good this year. They do. Then the the Suns, I it would be tough for the them. Mavericks, um, but, they look good, right? So I mean, you just it would be interesting because it's Bron and Steph. I'm sure yeah. they would find a way to win some games, but I don't know. I I really can't answer what I would think. I mean, you would hope they could get a championship because of the two of them, but I don't know. But we definitely know that the legacies would be impacted negatively for Bron. What you think? For sure, for sure. I think, I think, I think the same thing as you. I think they would have. I mean, just because of what happened with KD and how he, how he left. You know, he he was up three one. Golden State came back. Then the next season, he he all of a sudden on Golden State, and that his his legacy is negatively impacted by that. You know, what I'm saying, and I I think I think LeBron's would probably be. I don't think it would be honest. I don't think it would be worse than what KD's was, but it would definitely be negatively impacted. I, I don't know. Because it was th- this would have been his fourth team that he went to. Well, yeah, in, in that instance, then yeah, he would have you know d- just him moving around as much as he did that would negatively negatively impact it. But him leaving to go to play with Steph wouldn't negatively negatively impact LeBron's legacy as much as it impacted KD's for leaving to go play with Steph. If that makes sense, if you, if you see where I'm going with that. Well, yeah, because he was traded in KD. Well, I mean, because he was traded in KD. Was- Katie what Katie was traded, but no, he was signed. He wasn't traded, was he? Yeah, he signed to them. He uh, signed after, to he them. He went in yeah. free agency, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but he but he left after after losing in the playoffs, and he went and yeah. joined. You know, went and you can't beat him. Join them type of thing. LeBron is LeBron. If if it is true that he actually requested the trade, which is what the report is, but I don't think he actually requested one. But I, I can't say that because I don't know what his mo is. But if it is true that he actually requested the trade to go play with, with Steph. It's, it seemed like I, I think it definitely would have negatively impacted LeBron more, but I think it would have positively impacted Steph's legacy because it would have been like, damn, all these damn superstars want to come play with Steph. Is he really the GOAT for real? Like, I think that would have been a conversation that to be had. Like, So it would have positively hey, impacted Steph's legacy. I think it would have positively impacted Steph's legacy. 
I think so. Because Steph has been in the same place all the time. And then KD, who was one of the greatest players of all time, ain't, mm-hmm. ain't, no, ain't no denying that, leaves no. and goes and plays with Steph. Right. Hasn't won anything, hasn't won anything since Steph. And Steph has already mm-hmm. won a championship afterwards. LeBron won one in 2020, won one in the bubble, but hasn't won anything since. Then gonna go team up with Steph to try to win a championship. I think that more so positively impacts Steph, impacts Steph's legacy more than it, more than negatively, to be perfectly honest with you. I think that would be a conversation that people would have. Like, why does everybody want to go play with Steph? Like well, Steph must really would, be the GOAT for real. Yeah, it would, it would, in my opinion, it would solidify how most people feel about him in comparison to LeBron in this era of basketball where they could say potentially put him above LeBron for best of this era because he has just a, just as many championships as LeBron. He hasn't mm-hmm. left Golden State. He showed that he could win without another star, so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Whereas LeBron, while he did win in 2016, was that? But he, but he, he also, he also had Kyrie, who was considered. We people, people go back and forth with Kyrie if he's a star or a superstar. I think he's a superstar, yeah. me personally. But he also had Kyrie, who is also another superstar. So he hasn't won a championship without a quote unquote superstar on his team. Yeah, well, okay, that's true. But Kyrie wasn't at before that. He wasn't a proven star, which is why um, Cleveland was basically a lottery team after LeBron left and right before he mm-hmm. got there, they weren't a lottery team. Were they a lottery team? They were still a lottery team. They just weren't the number yeah, one. Yeah, they pick. still were. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, so, he, so he wasn't a proven star. And with the guidance of Bron, Quote, unquote, yeah. <laughs> right. He was able to elevate his game. Um, and then, yeah, he was able to elevate. I was going to say he won it after Kyrie left, but he didn't. They just went to the finals and lost. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I mean, <laughs> to me, that gives the that would solidify people being able to say, yeah, this is why Steph is better than Braun because in this era because of X Y Z. Mm-hmm. Matter of opinion, um, yeah. you know, tomato tomato. If if you feel that way, whatever. But I mean, what was I about to say to you? Um, Dang on. Yeah, I just had it in my in my. I just all um, good. All good. It was about Steph. I was. Just It'll come to, to me in a minute. Yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. come to me in a minute. Go ahead. But nah, I think. I mean, if if they if they would have teamed up together mm-hmm. with at their at both of their big ages, you know, what I'm saying LeBron about to be 40 on on Christmas Eve, or I think the day after Christmas before one of the two around mm-hmm. Christmas. He about to be 40 years old. At their, and then I think Steph is about to touch 37 in March, something like that, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So, you in the ballpark. at their big ages, yeah, in their, at their, in their big ages, dude, do you think they win a, ch- a championship? Or do you not, do, you talked about the salary cap, so do you think that they would have had enough to put around Steph and, and LeBron to be able to win a championship? And that's the question. Do they have enough with the uh, salary cap that those two take up to put enough around Steph and Braun to be competitive. Um, mm-hmm. You know, those two will win you games, but they're not going to win you in their ages uh, as they currently are. They're not going to win you the champions. They're not going to win you a championship or get you to the playoffs. You need a team that can play defense because you know they're not playing defense uh, on a night in, night out basis. You also need a big man to defend the rim and also, like I said, deal with Jokic, who is AD. has proven, oh, yeah, guys, who yeah. has proven <laughs> that he can. I won't say will, but he's skilled enough to make everybody else around him better with all of the things that he can do with the basketball, score, pass, dribble a little bit, so on and so Mm -hmm. forth. So I don't know with just those two if they win a championship. Um, They're going to need a slightly above average, in my opinion, two or two to four, three and D players, and then at least two big men. Um, and those individuals aren't going to be cheap if you're getting slightly above average, because as we've seen, average players in the league making are making eighty million four dollar uh, four year contracts, uh, four year eighty million dollar contracts. So, and that's a twenty million dollar hit on the cap. So right there, True. it's already half of what you need. So I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, if if it's one thing that I do know. 
with the NBA signing these new contracts coming up with these TV stations, that's going to bring some bread to the league. That would have brought right. some bread to the league, especially with these new contracts with, with these streaming services, your, your, your prime TVs, Netflix getting into the mix. You know right. what I'm saying? Amazon. Well, I said Amazon, but you got you got all the Peacock getting into the mix. Like you got all of these streaming services that's that's bidding to get into the NBA as far as being able to show the NBA on their networks. Like that would have brought Steph and LeBron together, bro. People is watching, bro. People are oh, yeah. going to it's, it's watch. Definitely gonna and that's just going to bring watch. so much money to the market, bro. It's going to be so much money to the market, bro. That that yeah. would that would be. No, I can't even say that. That's that's what that's what Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark need to do. Team up. <laughs> that's gonna bring so much. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna bring so much viewership to their league if they was to go ahead and just team up. Like if LeBron and Steph team up, that's what you and Caitlin Clark need to do. Angel who, Reese team who up. Caitlin Clark has figured it out, and nobody's oh, talking she has. about that. Nobody's talking about it. We Nobody can talk about it. If you want to talk about, about it. it, we can talk yeah. about it this weekend. If you want to talk about it, brother man, she, she she's figured it out. I, I don't know. If, like something's clicked. And, I mean, she she might not be shooting well, but the points are there. The assists are there. So, um, but we getting off topic. But you said Clayton sure. Clark and Angel Reese, and it just like well, yeah, but, um, yeah. Sure. It's definitely it definitely <laughs> would be must watch TV with those two um, because you're gonna have people like us that appreciate both of their games wanting to see them win and then you're gonna have people on the other side of the fence wanting to see them lose and saying i told you so i told mm-hmm. you why this he's not the goat i told you why he's not the best shooter so on and so forth yep. but um it, it really depend to me that while that will be must watch tv if they don't if they if it was to happen or if it were to happen if they don't have a good bench around them or a good group of individuals it's just going to be tragic in my opinion, because I don't think they're going to be that good. I think it, they may even be worse than the the Lakers team was. What two year, three years ago? So when that, whenever uh, AD and LeBron was hurt, I think that was twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, that that's just my opinion on that. I mean, but but why do you think? Why do you think Rich Paul put the kibosh on that joint, bro? Like, why did you think he nixed the whole situation? Like, he just the one that said, nah, I don't want y'all reaching out to LeBron James. Well, he said why. He said he thought about how negative it would have been, uh, the perception LeBron would have been in the basketball community. And I, I agree with Got that. You. Because, I mean, like I said, LeBron, that would have been his fourth team that he went to. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> not, it would have been his Third team. Third team, technically, but he would have yeah. moved four times, I feel. What you're right. Saying. And yeah. But, again, it's already the narrative of Bron having multiple coaches in his coaching career, which was never heard of until now, and about putting how somebody, how great somebody is, how many coaches they have or haven't had. Mm-hmm. Um, and then is he can't make the big shot. Okay. Okay. Um, He's the most clutch player in NBA history. We're not going to talk about that, huh? Okay. But but th- that's that's the next thing. Then is he's um the flop, you know what I mean? And then, so you add him Lay moving. Cry baby. <laughs> yeah, everything, right? So everything he does is under a microscope. Heavy is the Facts. head that wears a crown. Um, For sure. But but then you add the fact that he would have left Cleveland to go to Miami with D-Wade, going back to Cleveland with Kyrie and Kevin Love left Cleveland to go to L.A. um, and brought KD in and messed up a young nucleus of players who've all gone and been fairly decent in their – well, you had some that's gone on to be really good and some that's gone to be fairly decent in their respective teams. And then now if that was to happen for him to leave L.A. to go to Golden State with with Steph, mm, yeah, I I agree with Rich Paul. This should have been – Nixon, you asked all the questions I was going to ask. So we on the we always on the same way. <laughs> we always on the same page, brother. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, that's I agree. Rich Paul shutting that down. And and but remember when I said that how terrible Golden State was, how they went from being such a dynasty with the with um the GM that left. I forgot his name just like that. I forget um, his name too, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. But he's on, he on, he's on ESPN now calling games um, with that GM. And then Dunleavy came in and they kind of sucked. He made some bad decisions, mm-hmm. but it was going to take some major like blockbuster trade to get people to forget how bad of decisions he's made since he's been there. That's what he tried to do. Bob That's Mike. Exactly, 
Bob Myers, yeah. Bob Myers was the guy. So they built that dynasty with Bob Myers, uh, won those championships with him. He was able to bring in KD, make all that work. And then as soon as he left a year later, they looked like trash trading away. Can't handle um, Jordan Poole and Draymond's issues. Everything gets broken up, so to speak. And they, they look like the team that they look like. And then so in order to make up for that, you got to make drastic moves. And that's what Mike Dunleavy tried to do. But because of the the entity that is Rich Paul, Rich Paul is everywhere in the NBA. He is, bro. And controls a lot. No one man should have all that power. All that power. (laughs) Um, He nixed it. So... And I get it too, man. I mean, that definitely would have, from a PR perspective, that would have been bad for LeBron James because, like you like you said, man, everything that he does is under a microscope. There's nothing that he does that is not scrutinized to some degree. Like mm-hmm. anything that he says, any any way that he acts, anything, you know, you know, the way he, even off the court, the way that he, everything is just under such a microscope that LeBron can't do nothing without somebody saying, yeah, he ain't the GOAT. And Mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's it's one of those things where we can we can surmise whatever we want to surmise for as long as we want to about what would have came of this this trade and them teaming up. But truth of the matter is, bro, it ain't never going to happen. It ain't number one. It ain't never going to happen other than in the Olympics, which ain't probably ever going to happen again, because by the time that happens, LeBron going to be 44 and Steph going to be 41. So that Mm -hmm. probably ain't happening, to be perfectly honest with you again. But. Or all star game, be, or all star game. They don't do drafts no more. They stopped drafting, so that might. Oh, well, they're, they're both they in both the west. The, they're both on the west. Yeah. They're both on the west. Yeah, my, my bad. But it's it's one of those things where you can. It, it's definitely one of those dream scenarios to be like for both of them at the end of their prime, going towards the end of their careers, for them to team up and go crazy. That is like a dream scenario for like the average fan to be like, yeah, that should definitely happen. And yeah. me personally, I, I wouldn't call myself an average fan because we got the podcast now, so I look a little bit deeper into basketball more than I used to. Yeah. But for somebody like myself, I would love to see them team up. That would be something mm-hmm. I would like to see for sure. I would love to see that. And so my thought process with that would be like, would we? Well, we know the general. Me and you, we would like to see that. We, but we know majority of the public would not like to see that. One of the mm-hmm. friends of the show, G. What up, G? Uh, sent me a What's post yesterday G? with Anthony Edwards and KD and how their bond grew in the, mm-hmm. during the Olympics. Over the Olympics, yep. And, and he was like, he said, I would love to see them play together. And I was like, Nah, I wouldn't. And, and then the reason I said I wouldn't is because, well. If, we, if people want to see them play together, why do we have to hold? Why do we hold other individuals to a different standard than we do LeBron? And he was like, "That's the the casual fan that knows nothing about basketball and That's understands that later in their agree career, with yeah, later in their career, like they really don't have much to prove, and them winning a championship together would be good to see." And I was like, mm-hmm. "That makes perfect sense," but we know we don't deal with average people out here when it comes to basketball sense. So, I mean, I definitely would love to see it, but we know because of the perceptions that's being pushed, the the narratives that are spun and thrown out there about <coughs> our stars, about Bron negatively in this respective. And, and I think, I think Steph will come out on the better end than Bron if they was, if it was 100%. ever to happen, but he, it still would be spun negatively for him as well. Um, but we know if if they were to come, the the type of stories that would come out about why they can't be considered great as they are any longer is X Y Z. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would have loved to see it happen, man. But like you said, the casual basketball fan, they're not with it, bro. They're not with it. Ruining basketball. That's what they did. For, that's what they would talk about. And, and, but, but see, that's, that's what LeBron they say LeBron did. Yeah, that's what. The, but I that's know. what they say LeBron already did, though. You know what right. I'm saying? And they just go. They, they just going to continue to pile it on, pile it on, pile it on, pile it on to make it seem like it's LeBron's fault that, that now all of a sudden people want to move around and not stay with the same team, and now they got to yeah, yeah, team yeah. up with other superstars to win championships. Da, 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 whenever people were doing it before LeBron, right. so like it, it's it's just like it's like you said, man. People people hate to love. Oh no, people love to hate LeBron. Well, yeah. People and love then, to hate. Not hate to love, love to hate. 
Love to hate for sure. And then, I mean, it's, it's like we forget, I say this all the time and I'm, this is, I'll die on this hill. We forget that this is their job. It's, it, I mean, yes, it's a, kid's game. It, it's a kid's game. We understand that. Um, they're making a lot of money to play a kid's game, but it, at the yes. end of the day, it's still their job. Some of the individuals out there that are playing it, love it. Some of the individuals act like they love it, but they don't really love it. They're just doing it because it's a nice paycheck. But mm-hmm. it's their job. And if if you didn't like the job that you were at or the city that you were in and you had the way to go to somewhere else to make the same amount of money, if not more, you're going to do it. And you're that's what do these it. people are doing. You're going to go to the company <laughs> that provides you the, the most upward tra- trajectory to be the best that you can, to make the most money you mm-hmm. can with the least amount of stress that you can have. Mm-hmm. That's what these players are doing. And, you know, in the old days, just like in the work environment, in the old days, you, you worked your 40 years or 30 years, you collect your pension, you're going about your business. That ain't how it works anymore. We don't have pensions. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So comparing that to the NBA, it's not like that anymore. Players move around freely as they want to because it's a players league now. It's not run by the the owners like the NFL is or like it was back in the day. These players mm-hmm. run the league, so they gonna do whatever they can get away with. They are they, and they, they and they and they right for doing it. They right for, for sure. doing it. I mean, I don't, I don't have no issue with none of these players. No, nobody gave. Well, I guess nobody gave Dame Dame Lillard any uh, hate for moving and going to to, uh, to Milwaukee because he was being he was the only he, he vowed he was so loyal to Portland he vowed to stay with Portland for so long that they was like he need to go so they was happy right. when he left. But right. Dame Lillard and that did the didn't work thing. out how they, they thought they, it would he, be. Not at all, but he definitely went and teamed up with a superstar in the league, a former MVP, a former you know championship winner. So like nobody Finals gave MVP. him slack for it. Exactly. So it's like what you want now. Now you got no, nobody's giving nobody's talking about this either because nobody's giving Paul George any any slack. But he's teamed right. up with some superstars over his past couple of teams that he's been with. So mm-hmm. like nobody's talking about it unless it's LeBron, and it's crazy, bro. It's so crazy. Yeah. Everybody, people are doing it. Everybody's doing it. There's plenty. James Harden has done it. You know what I'm saying? Kawhi Leonard's done it. You know what I'm saying? Like people, have, people are doing this, bro. Like, but, but I, only I LeBron, only the LeBron is, want to get the slack for it. Yeah. Well, and this is why I think it is. And we can we can wrap it up after this if you want to. Um, I think it's because Bron has put himself. I wouldn't say he put himself, but he's definitely kept that narrative going of him being the GOAT. Um, and yeah, for, people, sure. for sure. People don't like that. Like like I said, we like our athletes to be arrogant, but not arrogant to a extent where it's, you get tired of hearing him say certain things. And that's what it is. Um, mm. he, he's put himself, he continues to keep himself in that conversation um, with some of the things that he says or implies in, in the interviews. And you know, it just rubs people the wrong way. You don't want to see, you want to keep the nostalgia. Michael Jordan is a nostalgia. And I, I, I still remain 1A, 1B. You go, LeBron's the GOAT. Come on, man. Come it on. Is, I mean, you it know is what I, it is. But, everybody know where I stand. But people don't, the 50% of the population, I, I don't really know the statistics, but I'm just assuming it's 50%, wants to re- keep Michael Jordan on that pedestal because of what he did for the NBA and how he brought the NBA to where it is now. Um, and then you have players that have taken the torch that he's he delivered to them and continued to run with it and elevate it even more. But we know mm-hmm. that Michael Jordan was the NBA in the, the 90s. And so that's and that's all it is. That is all it is. All right. So moving from talks with Steph and Braun to flag football beef, which is Crazy flag to think football about. beef, y'all. Y'all think about that flag football flag, beef. Flag football <laughs> beef. Um, if, if 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 it's even beef anyway, but U.S. national flag football champion quarterback Darrell Hoss Hoosh mm-hmm. Doucet. His name is Hoosh. Hoosh, yep. mm-hmm. Hoosh Doucet has an issue with the NFL's Olympic flag football announcement, which applied implied NFL players would take part in the games in the summer of 2028. Who stated, I think it's disrespectful that they just automatically assume that they're able to just join the Olympic team because of the person they are. Uh, they didn't help grow this game to get it to the Olympics. Sticks, 
do you think Hoosh has a point with his statement? And you, I got a barrage. I won't say a barrage, but I got a couple other questions. To come <laughs> so there, I, I'm, I'm kind of on both sides of the fence. I'm more so with. Hmm, I, I would say I'm more so with the I'm more so with the NFL players than I am with the flag football players. But let me tell you why. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I know Hoosh. I've played against Hoosh before. He, you know, on the East Coast, flag football is humongous, bro. Like mm-hmm. all of the East Coast, it is humongous. Kind of, kind of going over towards like your Ohio's, like mid, mid, mid East, all the way over to East. Like definitely on the East Coast, it's huge on that side. And Hoosh is a good player. Hoosh is a really good player. I've played against Hoosh before. He's a really, really good player. He's won world championships in 2021 when they went to Jerusalem, whenever they played in the world games in Birmingham, Alabama, um, the Continental uh, Championship in 2023. He was the MVP. He's a really, really good flag football player. Really, really good flag football player. So don't get me wrong. Hoosh has right to say what he says because he's a really mm-hmm. good player. Flag football player. I'm not going to just say football player. He's a really good flag football player. The reason and and the reason why I'm kind of on the fence is because I have experience in both. I, I was in the NFL, granted for a short time, but I was in the NFL. Everybody there is an athlete, bro. Everybody there is fast. Everybody there is strong. Everybody there is fundamentally sound. Everybody who is there deserves to be there in the biggest league in football that you can get to. Mm-hmm. Flag football, from what Hoosh is saying. Is is a very different game from what the physical game. It's still physical now because you definitely have four man contact, five man contact, seven man contact, eight man, all the way up to nine man contact mm-hmm. flag football. You mm-hmm. have all of those things, and people do get hit. You can you can buy what they call body up to pull the flags. You can do all of that. People get knocked out in flag football. Now don't get it twisted, but it is a very it's more of an of an agile game than it is a, a powerful game. And he has points because flag ain't no flag football isn't as easy as what people make it out to be. And I don't and I agree with him when he says that they they don't I don't agree with how they feel like they should just come in off name, say this because they're in the NFL and the NFL players. Some of them might get a rude awakening whenever they find out that a lot of these players who actually play flag football for a living or they know the game and they know the, strate- the, the strategy behind it, and they would they would probably be better than some of these NFL players just off skill alone from the from the flat football standpoint. Now, on the other side of that, it wouldn't take these NFL players long to pick that shit up. So <laughs> it wouldn't take them long. I was talking to my boy Steve. Shout out to you, Steve, if you're watching the podcast. He one of my old bosses back in the day. I was talking to Steve because he was my quarterback where we won four national championships in, in, uh, in flag football, five-man contact, four national championships. We were raw back in the day. Trust me. And he said that it would take them like a month or so just to get the hang of flag football and go out there and kill people. I don't even think it would take them that long, but I'll give them a month. It wouldn't take them that long to figure it out. So, like, he has I – I wouldn't call this beef because you can't beef with yourself. Ain't nobody going to respond to Hoosh. Like, ain't nobody going to respond to Buddy. But I understand why he why he has that narrative that they would have a rude awakening and it wouldn't be that easy for them to just come in and just take somebody's spot and they would have to earn it and they shouldn't be in the, the Olympics just off namesake. But, nigga, these motherfuckers are NFL players, bro. Like, if you ain't ever been to that level, you don't know what the hell you talk about, bro, because they will pick it up so quickly. With no problem, bro. they would definitely would. So, I I can see both sides, and I'm I'm lobbying a little bit more on the flag football side because I understand both, and I know that flag is a little bit more strategic, a little bit more agile. But it wouldn't take them long, bro. What you think about this beef, this quote unquote beef? <laughs> I think the beef is silly. It is. Unquote. I agree with that. I agree with um, that. And. I think the statement is silly also. I'm going to tell you why. We don't like to admit it, but he, okay, first off, he said they should not be, it's crazy to think that they can come in just off of namesake and think they can get a roster spot. Mm-hmm. I know we don't like to admit it. We just talked about it earlier, but then we just see this with Bronny. He got a roster spot off of namesake. Don't we see this every day in corporate life? 
people get <laughs> get, get things uh, just you for own something yeah you know what i mean so i mean that that's just life in in america we hate to admit it but that type of stuff is everywhere so somebody gets something just off a of namesake and I don't, I don't, you can make that face all you want to no 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 no, no. i was thinking to myself if the and if so, Jalen Hurts was the one that threw the, the 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 football on fire into the torch and lit it for the mm-hmm. Olympic Games for twenty twenty eight. You know, uh, other people like uh, Joe Burrow have mentioned that they wanted to play, and other guy Caleb Williams said that they wanted to play in the Olympics. So, would this be a form of nepotism? Uh, a little bit. Uh, why do you think the NFL made a uh, made a, 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 a an Olympic a, ad a, for it? A, 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 yeah, facts. <laughs> Because they're gonna be in there. <laughs> it, it's going. It's first. It's going to help grow the game of football, just like with For the sure. NBA when mm-hmm. they allow the dream team to be a part of the Olympic or allow the NBA players to be a part of the Olympics. And after that dream team, everybody was talking about NBA basketball, and the game exploded tremendously. Exploded. I mean, exploded. in America, football is the number one sport, but it's not a global game. Like it's starting to be a global game as Japan beat the United States in football. I don't know how, but it happened. Um, so it's Great. starting to be a global game. People are starting to pick up an overseas, mm-hmm. but you know, we just, we like physicality in For America. Sure. Not all countries like physicality like that. So playing flag football will allow you to get a taste of football but not the overall impact. Like you said, it, it does have physical nature to it. You mm-hmm. can body up. I don't know anything about flag football. I never played it. I too was like you. I was I was thinking, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's different rules. You can't like run with like how you typically you can't, run. You, you, can't fl- yeah, you can't flag guard, you know what I'm yeah. saying? If, if you're running like, if you're running with your arms towards your side because that's where your flags are, they can yeah. call flag guarding because you're technically like trying to swipe somebody's hand away from pulling your right. flag. So you can't do that. But okay. you got to kind of run with your arms up. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Trying and and certain hits, things you can't work. do. Yeah, certain things you can't do to keep people from taking the flag and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, certain rules that's in normal football that you can't do. I too was like, okay, there's some strategies that would take them some time to get involved to, to understand. I don't think it's going to take them a month. I think it's going to take them two weeks. Yeah, um, I, that's, and that's they what I say, like, but I'll give them the money. Be, yeah. And they're going to be ready to go. Just like, case in point, FIBA rules and Olympic rules aren't the same as NBA rules. It don't take them no time. I mean, they play more often FIBA rules than they do flag NFL players going to flag football. Yeah. But it don't take them any time to adjust to those no rules. No time to adjust. And then once they do, lights out. Another problem that I have with the statement that he says is he, they did nothing to help grow the game. Quite literally, they did everything to help grow the game of flag football. Um, and the reason that is because you don't you don't hear any when flag football. I started playing flag football when I was seven. Okay. I didn't go out there saying hypothetically. I didn't go out there saying I want to be like Hoosh. I went out there saying I wanted to be like. Whoever the, the star yeah. was, like Barry Sanders, Michael yeah. Irvin, those type yeah, of individuals. Yeah. Quite mm-hmm. literally, they did everything to grow the game of football. Okay, yeah, flag football, adult flag football has exploded, has exploded in the last exploded. few years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's all it, the the other thing of why NFL and these type of leagues have done everything to help grow the league is because most individuals that play flag football are playing flag football because either they didn't make it professionally or they inspired to make it professionally and just, you know, it just happens. So they're like, well, let me go play flag football. Quite literally, they did everything (laughs) to help grow the game. So I have an issue with that, with his statement. But I understand where he's coming from. Like, yeah, I did. I worked and bust my tail, won all these championships, got notoriety um, playing flag football. I am who I am in flag football. And for an NFL player who's never played flag football at a competitive level like I have, to just think he's going to have a roster spot, get the heck out of here. I, I I deserve a roster spot. But like I said, namesake for sure is going to get them in that roster spot if they want to. But do you actually think they're going to play in the Olympics? The NFL players? NFL players. Hell yeah. Hell no. <laughs> Yo, then they gonna play? It's it's gonna be right before the season starts. I mean, yeah, they'll delay the season a bit, but the Olympics will be right before the season starts. Ain't no way 
franchises are going to let NFL players you play know what? in the You're Olympics. Right. You're right. Because because the Olympics do go on whenever OTAs and camps right. and stuff start. So they probably won't. But I mean, they they but but to my point, they have all right to do so off namesake alone. They have yeah, all right off, to do so yeah. off name, yeah, off namesake alone. They yeah. have all right to do that. If they want to actually play and somebody from the Olympic uh, organization says, hey, I want you to come out and they decide to just off namesake, 100 percent they should go yeah. play if they want to. If their organizations let them do it and their teams let them do it and their agents or whoever let them do it. But, yeah, they definitely should. Will they? You might have a point. They probably won't because of when their Olympics takes place. But yeah. but but to, to that point though, to to your point, the the NFL has started putting flag football ads in there during the during the Super Bowl. Their now their Pro Bowl is now a flag football game. It mm-hmm. just ha- recently happened. I think this was the second year of that, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, that trash. Yeah, it's, it's terrible, but they playing flag football now as far as whenever they play, when they play their Pro Bowls. I should say they, trash. Let me let me let me take it that. Low back. key is kind of trash. The reason it's trash lie. is because it's not it's not what you want to see. I mean, a lot of the all-star games now, other than it used to be basketball, but now even basketball is starting to take a decline when it comes to mm-hmm. the competitive nature of it and actual yeah. watchability of it. Um, maybe baseball might be the only one now, um, but that's baseball. That baseball either. is very competitive, though. I, yeah. I just like watching a home. Well, home it is competitive because whoever wins that game gets, gets home, home field advantage, advantage in the, uh, in the, play, in the World, in the series. World Series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you think about NFL players for their all star game playing flag football. <laughs> <laughs> but that, hold on, hold on. First of all, first of all, I ain't going to talk about flag football like that. No, flag that's what I'm football? saying. No, 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 I ain't no, going to no, talk no, about no. flag football like no, that because no, I was a goat when I played flag football. And I, I love flag that. football. I get that. You know that. what I'm saying? I ain't going to talk about flag football I like get, that. Bro. No, okay, I, okay. I'm not <laughs> saying flag football is trash. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying these players got to be in that game from playing tackle football, not for sure. flag for football. Sure. For sure. For sure. I don't want to see that. And then even even because of the physicality of tackle football, they don't they still don't even really go hard in the flag football. It's I like, agree. That's what I I'm, agree. That's why I'm saying it's terrible. Not because of the flag elements, but because of how different what how they got to the game and the game that they actually playing in the all-star game, which is the Pro Bowl, is. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, and to your point too, I think that all of these All Star games, other than the uh, the the Major League Baseball All Star game, because they actually have something to play for, and maybe that's what they could they could. In, anyway, I'm gonna get to my point. I mm-hmm. think a lot of these for for basketball and football for sure. I think they've become more entertainment and safety and more entertainment value and safety than they have been as far as like the competitive nature of it. Because right. if you be if we being real, they ain't really got much to play for going to the Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. If they had some kind, with. yeah. If they had some kind of incentive like Major League Baseball has, if you win the world, whatever side, if National League or American League wins the the the, the uh, All Star game, then they have home field advantage in the World Series that mm-hmm. that that division. Then that would probably be something for them to play for as far as the NFL and the, and the NBA. But since they ain't really got much to play for, and it's all entertainment value, and of course, football and basketball get more eyes than baseball does, mm-hmm. then it's going to be all entertainment. People going to watch regardless to see Steph, to see LeBron, to see KD, to see Giannis, to see Dame, to see Luca, to see Trey Young, to see all of these guys go out there and just go crazy, shooting from half court, windmill dunking, three sixty dunking. They're just going, they're going, they're going to watch it for that. But like D'Lo said, though, it is starting to starting to get kind of like eh, starting to become a snooze fest, low key, because ain't nobody yeah. being competitive, but. Flag football, hoosh, you, 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 I understand because I've played, I played for a, I played flag football for a long time up until I came to Washington. I haven't played in the last three years, but up until I moved in 2021, I was playing football literally consistently every single season, spring, mm-hmm. summer, fall, winter. I was in a league playing flag football for the better part of I would say 11 to 12 years I was playing flag football so I understand your sentiment but them boys will pick it up quick and they definitely deserve a spot on that on that Olympic team if they ever decide to go or if their organization will let them go definitely deserve yeah. it 100% yeah I don't think that organizations will let them go uh, mainly because we saw this year that organizations weren't letting players go because they wanted to, them to be healthy so that they could trade them during the season or whenever they wanted to trade them. 
Um, but last question, if they were to play, who would you think would be good flag football players? Me being somebody who actually plays flag football, Tyreek Hill would be amazing because it's all about speed. And, and he's agility. low to the ground. And he's low to the ground. He would be amazing at it. Um, Jamar Chase would be amazing. Um, There's one person I don't think you're going to say. You may. Um, I'm, you're surprised. Kyler, Kyler Murray would be amazing. <laughs> I didn't think you was going to say him. You Kyler think I was say my, <laughs> yeah, Kyler Murray is my first pick. Kyler, Kyler Murray would be amazing. Um, as far as like people who would be on the defensive side of the ball. Justin Jefferson, uh, you wouldn't pick him? Ju- Oh, I would. I I, I was. I wasn't done, but yeah, Justin Jefferson. Okay. I would definitely pick. I would definitely pick Jettas on the defensive side of the ball. Sauce Gardner would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, Micah would be great because Micah could play linebacker. Um, Minka, Minka, Minka Fitzpatrick would be great because he could. If he oh, he would be amazing at a safety, especially in five man. Oh my god! Uh, so uh, it's a lot of guys out there that I think. Uh, but the crazy All part of them, is like really. A, that's what I'm about to say. The crazy <laughs> part is. Anybody could go, bro. Everybody is fast. I tell the story all the time. When I was in, when I was in Miami with the Dolphins, bro, I caught a hitch route and was taken off. Mind you, I ran four three eight and going into the league. I ran a four three fucking eight. I was, was running blessed. down the sideline. Boss, <laughs> he's stupid. I was running down the sideline and I was getting caught at an angle by a defensive tackle, bro. D- he was a defensive end at the time, but the, the defensive tackle, I forget his name at the time, and Jason Taylor were catching me at an angle. They're defensive linemen, almost 300 pounds. I went into the, I went into the league at like 210, running a 4-3-8. How are they catching me? So any, any of those guys, any of those guys in the NFL would be amazing at flag football. Just give them a couple of minutes to a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe stretching it to a month. Give them a couple of weeks to a month to learn the, the strategy and what it really takes to actually play fo- flat football, it's wraps for any country in in, in Olympics. It's wraps. It's because you know you know they're gonna bring in all the strate- strategists that they need to pick the game up quicker than for they sure. actually have. So for sure. that's why I'm like, okay, I I under, like you said, I understand the sentiment. I still think the statement was silly, um, but it, it kind of was. Know, but I understand felt, why he said it. Yeah, I understand why he said it, and I, I'm sure he felt threatened. To a degree, you know how when you feel yeah, lesser yeah, than yeah, sometimes, yeah. and not saying he mm-hmm. feels lesser than. I'm pretty sure he's ultra confident. He's, dude. No, he's great. No, Hoosh yeah. is good. He's good. Yeah, he's really good. But you know when you feel lesser than sometimes, you just lash out and say stuff that don't really make sense when you think of it logically. <laughs> I don't think this logically made sense. Like he if didn't they think want this through to, really. Good, yeah, if they well. want to names namesake wise, they're getting a, a spot. They, they did, spot. in my opinion, and yeah, and people might think I'm stupid for my statement, but quite literally, they did everything to grow the game of flag football because one and i didn't mention this they've been like you said they've been well you mentioned i guess they've been pushing ads for flag football for like five years now for sure and pushing even, even the, women women the women's exactly side we, on yep. the same, we, we on the same boat tonight same, always same page um yeah, yeah. it was a women's league so like it, to me that the statement as a whole didn't make sense but i understand where it came from for sure Moving on to the next topic, man. We're about to get into some pop culture and some entertainment, bro. So who of y'all remember Hurricane Chris? Anybody? Bay, bay, bay. Anybody? Bay, bay, bay. Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Yeah, yeah. Y'all remember, Let me y'all get remember that her? Y'all... Let me get that hand clap. Let me get that hand clap. Yeah. yeah. So, so all of y'all who watch our show faithfully, y'all about our age anyway. So y'all know who Hurricane Chris is. Mm-hmm. So 50 Cent just did a Louisiana, uh, a Shreveport comedy festival in Louisiana here recently. And Hurricane Chris comes out and he's ripping 50 Cent online about not having any Louisiana artists at this Three Point Comedy Festival to perform. Nobody like Boosie, nobody like Wayne, nobody like himself, nobody like Lil Webby, the couple of names that he mentioned. So, D'Lo, do you think that he was right in coming out and quote unquote challenging or or, or talking, sh- talking smack to 50 Cent for not having any um, any Louisiana entertainers at this comedy fest? I mean, you know, when you have stuff in certain areas of the country, you always want to have some type of local representation talent, representation of the area. When you have festivals, that's what respect, I, I, not respective, because I believe 50 is 
respectable, a respectable gentleman. Yeah, respectable sure. gentleman. But that's what most festivals do. They try to have some type of local talent or some type of culture from that area infused in the festival. Mm-hmm. However, you know, I'm going to a different angle with this right now. Rising tides elevate all boats. And <laughs> Boy, that's the title. Go ahead. I'm listening. Rising tides elevate all boats. And what I mean by that in this situation is 50, who is from Jamaica, Queens, New York, took his production company and bought some studios in Shreveport, Louisiana, and is going to make it you know, as big as he can. By him doing that, he elevates... Shreveport as a whole, he elevate and and that permeates out into elevating the Louisiana region and also mm-hmm. maybe even the Gulf Coast region, right? Mm-hmm. And so I feel like somehow, some way, our culture always finds a way to find negative in a good deed. I agree with that, and I mean, like I understand again, too complex. We we see both sides. Mm-hmm. And, and we we try to talk it out to hopefully start a conversation about it. But I understand what Hurricane Chris is saying. Yeah, you probably want some type of local talent to be involved with that. Uh, what was it? it was called? The humor and harmony, was harmony called, and humor. It, was it, it called okay, gotcha. harmony and humor festival? Is what it was called. Okay. Um, and so you probably want some local talent to be included in that. But you know, if if what, so 50 said nobody wants to hear you on stage singing A Bay Bay 50 times. <laughs> That's what he 50's a troll. But he's a troll. as a businessman, I think he's a respectable individual. Yeah. He tries to do but like Wayne probably was not gonna do that concert. Um but I don't know because 50 also said he got off stage with um Master P. So mm-hmm. or so I mean I, I don't know. Do, your question was does Hurricane Chris have uh, a reason to want yeah, local talent? Point. He does, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I don't think social media. Everybody goes to social media when they have a gripe or something because that's a big platform. You can, you know, garner a lot of ears with a few seconds or just a push of a button. Mm-hmm. But, but I, I don't think he the method in which he decided to do this was the right one. He could have contacted 50 and be like yo the next time you do this um because i think Make it was sure the annual somebody yeah. yeah it was the annual festival in shreveport next time you do this hit me up or hit somebody else up bootsy whoever mm-hmm. so we can have some representation of the culture in louisiana shreveport at this festival but i've gone on long enough what do you feel about it I, I'm, I'm with you i'm with you i feel like i feel like he definitely has a point because you don't you don't want to be putting on a festival and not have somebody f- you know you you come in you, like you say he's from New York he's coming to Louisiana he brought his uh his media company to Louisiana you know what I'm saying he's throwing this festival in in Shreveport Louisiana and there's no reason why you can't have somebody to represent the 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 state of New the, you know what I'm saying to to be able to to represent Louisiana at this festival there's no reason why mm-hmm. you can't do that he could. Mm-hmm. He hasn't. Fifty has enough connections. He could have found somebody in Louisiana to to go ahead and do this festival. He had perform perform and give some entertainment at this festival, not just the comedy, but some music as well. He could have. He could have done that, which probably would have made the festival a little bit better if he had some music going on, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like you said, the way he went about it, like going and you know what I'm saying you know calling 50 out his name and you know what I'm saying and saying that he gave 500 half a million dollars to the police force and you know what I'm saying that money could have went to the youth and you know what I'm saying you brought you came to Louisiana with your company because you know it was it was cheap land and you know just kind of kind of making it seem like 50 cent is a, a is a filthy businessman low key but <laughs> if it's one person you can't come at on the internet, it's 50 Cent, <laughs> bro, because he going to troll you. He going to troll, troll you, and he is king troll. But it's, but, like, you don't, it, when, whenever you get to a status like that, if I'm being completely honest, you don't owe nobody nothing. Just, just like mm-hmm. we talked about Simone Biles last, you know, last week. 
Simone Biles don't owe her mama nothing just because of the status that she has. 50 Cent yep. don't owe Hurricane Chris or Webby or Lil Wayne or nobody shit. Just because he got a status and just because he's doing something in your town, he putting something on for the company. He putting something on for that for that city. You know what I'm saying? For that area. If you if you look at the reports, bro, that festival is has has brought so many small businesses so much money. So he's he's technically doing something for that for that community. He's doing something for Shreveport. He's doing something for Louisiana because everybody around that festival is eating. Mm -hmm. Everybody is profit. Everybody's making revenue. Everybody's making money. So you can't sit here and act like he's not doing anything. And but I just like the last thing, man. I understand the sentiment, but Hurricane Chris should have like just like D Lo said, he should have came about it a different way. Reach out to the man. Talk to him. Like, bro, you in you in my state, bro. You in my city. Like, have somebody that represents Louisiana at your at your festival. You could have did it as a man instead of going to doing some some bullshit and going to the internet. Like, come on, these bro. people's like, internet, these people's. You know what I'm saying? Where you gonna where you gonna get the biggest buzz? And he had a couple of tweets that he put out there too, talking about when I got a deal, I saw Shreveport was a place that was looked at like a cheap investment, but we still protected our home front to make sure we would keep what's ours. The city is using fifty cent to make the city money, not people, not the people half a mil on the police. You just you just fed the beast. Then he came out and said, Louis, Shreveport, Louisiana, we don't need concerts. We need we need for the people like 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 we need for the people like me who defend ourselves to have their rights respected by the state. Louisiana has the fourth worst education system in America and they use jail as profit. But my people just want to party. So, I mean. I can respect that. I mean, I understand then, where you're coming from with that. And then his last tweet said, I feel like our culture and history is all on the line and I see who's responsible for misleading him how you pop up in a city and don't ask the streets what's really popping and you start making statements about what we not calling ourselves we don't respect money we respect respect so i understand i understand where hurricane chris is coming from i i 100 percent do i really 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 do but go about it a different way bro like if man, man to man he, he a grown-ass man he in his 30s like us 50 cent in his 40s like man to man, I'm gonna come at you and say, "Hey, man, we could have did this a little bit better. This is some ideas that I might have." He ain't gotta listen, but you could at least reach out, hit the man in the DMs. If you don't respond back, you don't respond back. But at the same time, like you could have went about this a different way. I would have never got on somebody's uh, on these folk internet, you know what I'm saying, and went off like he went off, like literally cussing, mad, calling Fifty out his name, telling him he did some fair shit. Like that's crazy. That's crazy mm -hmm. to me. So. I get both. I get Hurricane Chris, but nah, Fifty doing his thing, man. Let Fifty do his thing. Like he doing it in your city, bringing your city profit, bro. Regardless of how you feel about the education system, which is a good thing to worry about, but he bringing your city bread, regardless if people if there's a representation there or not. And y'all in, in Louisiana needs that kind of money, and they're in 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 you know in in the inner cities, mm -hmm. which is where he doing it at. So I, I'm with Fifty on this. You know what I'm saying? Chris got points, but I'm I'm with Fifty on this for sure. Yeah, it's it's what it sounds like to me um, is is the street code. If you yeah. come into my city, you got to check in. That's what it sounds like for me, sure, right? For sure. And while we grew up in rough times, I don't know about you. I can't. I can only speak for myself. You know where I grew up at. You've been in my house before. <laughs> you know where I grew up. Right. Well, I mean, I I'm talking. Home. I'm talking about like yeah. I know what side of town you grew up on, but oh yeah, I don't know. I never grew up, I never grew and and was held to a street code. Don't try to act like I'm a street dude whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know these codes. Mm -hmm. um, and listening to Fifty talk, um, Curtis Jackson is his name. Fifty um, talk the last couple of years. It seems like he was put. He's always put on a persona of this type of person. Like he did. He did sell drugs and all that when he, he was has, younger, He has a history for sure, yeah. He has a history, but when he got out of it, he got out of it. For sure. And he no longer lives by that code. So you telling him you need to have some artists from that area is only going to make 50 say, yeah, okay, whatever, I'll do what the fuck I want to do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what he's doing. But like you said, Hurricane Chris does have some points. Um, I mean, he was holding a festival. You want to make sure the festival is... Um, guarded as much as possible or, or as safe as possibly can be because we've seen some tragic incidents happen in the last few years. So 
Mm-hmm. I know like people don't like the the police and you know we have our our beefs with the police here and there but ultimately they have a job to protect and serve and and making sure that you give them the amount of money that they need to have the police out there Especially I don't if think you're trying that's to live by a street code you going if you if you thinking about like how hurricane chris come up he talking about a street code and he wanted and he you know talking about how you funded the police just that thought process alone makes you want to make sure you have a lot of police around. Period. Right. Whenever you think yeah, about so the street the, code, the five hundred thousand go going to no, you good. The five hundred thousand going to the police is for the protection of the of the, the city the of the festival. People. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah, and then that goes to the protection of the city. Now, can it find ways to harm the individuals that Chris is talking about? Absolutely, absolutely, we know that. Mm-hmm. Um, we we know like there are bad apples out there, mm-hmm. but or bad actors, bad apples, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that money will go to the police, and it can get back to harming the environments that Hurricane Chris grew up in that he's talking about that he wants to help elevate in Shreveport. But I don't think that is a reflection of Fifty's decision or calling him a Fed. I don't I don't think we need that. I'm sure you probably have some other questions. I'm going to ask you this question because I think it kind of goes with this. Will we ever in our culture get to a point where we can let high value, high worth individuals in our community flourish and help us out rather than constantly trying to find negativity in everything that they do? There's always going to be haters, bro. There's always going to be haters. That's why there's a popular song by French Montana. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. I mean, Mm -hmm. and that's why that's why that's why Curtis Jackson has haters because he is he is prop he is popping, but I, I, there's there's always going to be some somebody's going to have a negative thing to say about something that somebody is doing all the time. Mm-hmm. There's never going to be a situation where even shoot even in, you know we me and you regular Joe Schmo you know what I'm saying even we in some parts of our lives when we got whenever we do something good we're going to have somebody on the sideline hating because mm-hmm. they may have may want what you want or maybe maybe want to put in the position that you in that a position that you're in you know what i'm saying that could be family that could be friends that could be co-workers that could be anybody just a random regular joe schmo on the street somebody gonna hate it's always gonna be hate around you know what i'm saying and if there is no, to be perfectly honest with you if there's no hate there's no competition so the the, the hate the hate if, if somebody has a jealous bone in their body they just that is that should that should give that should. That's not for everybody. There's probably a vast minority of people that have a hate and bone in their body see this competition. But that's what should happen is if you see somebody got something that you want and you got you, you feel some type of hate towards that, you should have that, com- com- that competitive nature to say, I'm going to go get that too. Mm-hmm. But there has to be some sort of competition within life to say so for people to progress. So it's never going to go away. Everybody's going to hate something about somebody who was in a position of power or who was in a position of wealth. Everybody's going to hate on it. It's, it's never going to go away. The the question uh, that comes after what you just said about when you see somebody get something you want, it probably will be some jealousy, but you should have some gumption within yourself. I'm paraphrasing. You should have some mm-hmm. gumption within yourself to say, I want to go get that too. Where's that line of where it's just complete jealousy and, and that you'll use that as fire to go get it as well and enviousness to where you just like, I'm going to find every way possible to tear this person down. That line is the moment you speak out without showing that you want it to. That's the line. Cur- Hurricane Chris is hating. <laughs> the Hurricane Chris is hating. Now he did have some level of fame with the, I would say three hits that he had when mm-hmm. he was popping. Mm-hmm. But this is hate. What Hurricane Chris is doing is hate. The moment that that line is drawn from the, the the people who are competitive are quiet. The people who are not competitive are just hating are loud. The moment you speak out is the moment that line is crossed from mm-hmm. from 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 go getter competitive nature to hate and envy. That's where that line is crossed. And the moment you speak out and you get loud about your hate, that's the moment. Could, that's the moment that line is crossed. But couldn't some of that also be um, holding somebody accountable? It couldn't be actual truth in it as well, though, because it like there is there, there is, is truth in what Hurricane Chris is saying. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. is, there is. So he is, in, in some, in a lot of what Hurricane Chris is saying is accountability. Mm-hmm. 
But again, 50 Cent don't owe you or Shree Point shit. He well, don't owe y'all nothing. He's he's made he's put money into Shreveport by purchasing that studio and it has the vision of turning it into what it, if he's able to do what he says he wants to do with that studio mm-hmm. in Shreveport it could be like the studio that Tyler Perry has in Atlanta for sure for sure I agree. if if not I agree if not on the same level as the one in um uh, as Tyler Perry Studios it could be fairly close and for Shreveport that's everything because Atlanta ec- economy Versus Shreveport's economy is night and day. Night and day. And so if you're able to bring that type of uh, money to Shreveport, that is going to, I said, um, high tide, I said tides, rising tides, elevate all boats. That that mm-hmm. that goes for everything, negativity and positivity. So in, in this situation, if he brings that money to Shreveport, that's going to elevate everything in Shreveport. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, the it, taxes yeah. will probably raise too, but it's bit. going to it's going to bring up more economics. The schools could get better because of the, the money that's coming into the system. Um, you're able to, you know, see the infrastructure increase because it's so many things that will increase because of what Fifty has done. So he he doesn't owe Shreveport anything, but he is actually helping Shreveport with everything that he's done so far. I think this was a thank you for allowing me to come and, you know. And, and this is going to be an annual festival. So, yeah, this is something that 50 Cent is going to do every single year. So, 100%, this is something that he's doing for the community, for right. the city, for the economy of Shreveport, Louisiana. Like, yeah. It, 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 uh, I, yeah. Yeah. The moment Chris, the moment, Hur- the moment Hurricane Chris spoke up was the moment it turned from competition to hate. In, in yeah. So, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we went longer. I, I knew we was going to go long. Honestly. I knew he was too, and I was going to ask you: Do you want to go ahead and get into this last topic? Because we don't necessarily have to, but we can definitely. Nah, talk about it real I, quick. I, I think, I think, I think those three, good, those three yeah. is a good episode. I, I think this is a good, good episode, man. Um, and if if it presents itself on the next episode, we could definitely talk about it. But no need For to sure. to stretch content. Um, but yeah, episode seventy eight in the books, right? Seventy eight. Yes, sir. I tell you, I can't keep up with it now that we do it <laughs> twice a week. Twice a week, right? Yeah, I'd be forgetting like like early in the show when we first started. I thought we just talked about it. What I did on the weekend, and it's like, <laughs> wait a minute, no, that was Friday. That was uh, but anyway, Friday, yeah, yeah. Episode seventy eight in the books. Again, we want to thank you for tuning in to Two Complex. Remember that life is oftentimes uh, short. And oftentimes complex, messing up already. Um, but when it becomes too complex, don't be afraid to lean on those that you love to help you bring sim- help you find simplicity and balance in life. Stay prayed up in this crazy world. A few requests thrown above can return you peace and sanity. Thanks for loving us and supporting this podcast. It means the world to us. We're sending our love right back to you. Um, don't forget to follow us on wherever you listen to your wherever you listen to podcasts, um, and then also follow us. On, subscribe on all of our social media platforms. That's YouTube, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. And as always, if it ain't too complex, it ain't complex at all. Until next time, we'll see you when we see you. Salute. Salute. <laughs>